TikTok, time to rock. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon to everyone who's watching from all over the world. I'm your friendly neighborhood philosopher, David Wood. And with me now is the author of about 187 books, <laughs> Robert Spencer. How you doing, Robert? Just great, David. How are you? Good, 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 good. Um, for people who haven't been around, because we always get new viewers and so on, new subscribers, uh, why don't you recap? Because people, I, I, I also get comments from people saying, hey, how, how, how's, how's Robert? How did, was Robert okay? Uh, why don't you give people a quick recap of what happened a while back? Sure. Uh, April 28th, 2019, to be specific, I uh, died. My heart stopped. And then I got better, but I was uh, pretty much out for about 10 days and then in the hospital for about six weeks. And this was not just uh, heart failure, but kidney failure, liver failure, pretty much every organ just gave up, figured this guy's done and uh, had to learn to walk again. All sorts of entertaining things have been happening, David, but mm -hmm. it's all on the upswing and uh, I can tell you that after considerable period, I'll tell you, you know something, last year around this time, actually, I think it was June, we did a video, it was the first one I had done since I had gotten sick, and uh, I remember speaking to you for about five minutes, and then it was five after the hour, and my voice was shredded, and I thought, how am I going to make it through Mm. another 55 minutes of this and of course even that would be a short video for the ones you usually do but now i'm happy to say that uh i'm blabbing as much as ever and it's uh it's not terrible and painful to either do or to listen to and uh very happy to be here very happy to be above ground very grateful to god and there it is um and i i heard i heard that you actually had a Muslim doctor helping you out when you were going through some of the health issues. Yes, that's correct. Uh, I was actually uh, uh, getting some surgery, and uh, there was a cardiologist who was doing it, and I was uh, awake the whole time. Um, actually, uh, this is something, I mean, I don't have a whole lot of experience to compare it to, but this is not something I would have expected. I would have thought for this, you know, they open your chest up, you're there, you're going to be out. But yeah. all they did was put a, a, a curtain wow. up so I couldn't look at the gory details. And then they had this nurse, I'm, I'm, I'm very grateful to her to this day, who uh, engaged me in conversation. And we had a very incisive discussion about jazz music and related issues. And meanwhile, I was hearing the... Uh, doctor saying that he uh, was in the middle of the Ramadan fast because this was in, uh, I guess it was in May last year, May 2019, and Ramadan was in full swing. And so this was about 3.30 in the afternoon, and I thought, oh dear, this poor fellow, he hasn't had anything to eat or drink since <laughs> before dawn, and now he's got my chest open. <laughs> <laughs> so i was very grateful to him when everything went okay i, I think and, i think uh, i think it's a ramadan exception that even if you're fasting you can eat robert spencer's heart well you know i believe, it's an it, I believe that's allowed thing. i think this is the first time that i have publicly discussed this gentleman and a lot of people would say oh but you you hate muslims you must have hated this doctor and i think that's ridiculous you totally. know this is a, a canard that's followed us around a false charge that's followed us around for 20 years and more now david that to speak honestly about islamic doctrine about islamic jihad violence about sharia oppression of women and others is to hate muslims it's mm -hmm. ridiculous it's false i love this guy and i told him you know, thank you for saving my life after uh, he, he went through the surgery. But I was just so glad that he was had enough, uh, what would one say, equipoise, prepossession. He, he, he was uh, together enough to be strong, hale, hearty, able to concentrate mm -hmm. even after a day's worth of no food or drink. And so more power to him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, I mean, we're not we're not in the Bronx anymore, but uh of our five sons, two of them have a, a medical disability, and, and their pediatrician was a uh, hijab-wearing 
Muslim woman. And, uh, you know, if, if you're, if you're a, if you're a good, if you're a good pediatrician, I don't care what your, I don't care what your religion is. And so it's, uh, in fact, if you run into that doctor, doctor, you can tell him he's got a golden ticket. If I'm about to, if I'm about to blast Muhammad one day and that one doctor, that one doctor <laughs> wants to call and say, David, just let this one go. Let this one go. I'll let it go. I'll give him a golden ticket okay. where, where he gets, uh, <laughs> he gets, a you know, he gets a blessing. Else, though, David. Uh, now that this is out in public and people know this, I would expect that there are numerous Islamic jihadis, Islamic supremacists, Islamic apologists of the type we were discussing last night who are absolutely appalled and enraged that their co-religionist, this physician, did not do me in when he had the chance. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, so much for them. He, he, he valued the Hippocratic Oath, and, uh, well, I'm glad of it. Yeah, that is good. And uh, yeah, everyone, so to criticize an ideology is not to hate a person, which is weird because, I mean, I went through I went through philosophy graduate school. All you do in philosophy is attack everyone else's position. At the end of the day, that's all you do. And the goal is to to sift out weakness I and mean, find weaknesses in, in person's position. So you sit there, you sit there for days or weeks working on your paper, get your brilliant argument down, and then you give it, you present it in front of everyone, and then everyone just mercilessly attacks it and tells you how stupid it is. And that's what everyone, that's what everyone does. It never crosses anyone's mind. Oh, you just attacked my position. It's the end of the world. You're trying to have me killed. Oh, uh, <laughs> you're a da you're a David Wodafobe. You're trying to murder me because you said my position is wrong, and that I need to change my position and get to the truth. Oh my goodness! It's 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 only when we get to certain positions that uh, that can't withstand any level of criticism and have to rely on this sort of uh, oh you're racist yeah. because you criticize this and so on. Pure cow also the, pure cowardice. This threat of violence, David, mm -hmm. is exactly uh, so. Last year, uh, uh, somewhat after our voice shredding video. I uh, spoke uh, at uh, a uh, county Republican meeting up in New England, and there was all sorts of an outcry and people trying to get us canceled and all the, the usual things you'd expect. And the, there was a local Muslim family in this rural area of New England who actually said, we fear for our safety because this guy is going to speak. And I thought, well, oh, come on, yeah. what, what a lot of hooey, mm -hmm. you know? They, if you criticize an ideology, people are in danger. If that were followed out consistently, then nobody would be able to criticize anything. Mm -hmm. But, of course, it's just a weapon to use to try to silence people who speak honestly about Islamic Jihad doctrine. Yeah, I think, I think, there, I think there's a kind of mixture. On the one hand, they know that they can, they can weaponize this. They can say, we, we're in fear of persecution against us. And if you play a victim right now in the West, um, you get all the sympathy points in the world. But uh, I, I think there may be some Muslims who take this sincerely, thinking, oh, if people are attacking our position, that's because they, they, you know, they, they want us killed and stuff like that. There may be Muslims who know from their perspective that when you call that's someone, when you criticize someone's position, you're basically calling for them to be killed because that's how it is that's, in Islam. Yeah. If you say, hey, he left Islam or, hey, he's got a false position or, hey, he's got a false religion, that's a call for either his death or his, at least his violent subjugation. And so they might come to other parts of the world and not fully absorb that you're, you're free to, to believe what you want. And you're 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 free to say what you want. They they might not absorb that thing. Ah, they're criticizing our religion. That means they're all about to kill us or something. And so that's an excellent point. I yeah. never thought of that. That's uh, I got to hand it to you, David. You win the internet for tonight. Well, I uh, I do have that effect on people. I am a <laughs> I am an unstoppable fire hose of awesome points. <laughs> All right, now uh, we actually have a, a topic that we want yes. to discuss, and uh, but before we do, just wanted to look, a brief continuation, a brief continuation from yesterday because this is what Sam Shamoon and I will be talking about tomorrow. Um, yesterday, of course, we spent a while talking about Ali Dawa and his claim that yes, apostates will be killed. Contrary to Islamic apologists for the past 20 years telling everyone, nope, there's no death penalty for apostasy in Islam. Uh, Ali Dawa says, yes, and we're proud of it. We're proud of the death penalty in Islam. Right? And yes, you apostates will be killed once we take over. Ali Dawa quite open about that. Then we had uh, Muhammad Hijab and his meltdown. <laughs> Muhammad Hijab trying to start an insult fest with everyone. <laughs> 
when he's the most sensitive person in the entire world. And it took me all of six seconds to trigger him for the next six months. And we're just trying to make the point that this is not a good, it's not a good look for you. Hey, job. Not a good look. Not a good look for you to be uh, starting an insult battle. But so anyway, <laughs> we had fun last night. We had fun. And uh, let, let's go ahead and check out Hijab's Twitter page uh, today. So we have Muhammad Hijab, who's comparative religionist, political philosopher, author, and debater, according to his Twitter. Uh, but notice. And uh, all sorry. around, good guy. Yeah, so he says, uh, why, when you had the chance to destroy me, you wanted to run away. Now behind the screen, you are a big man. I don't know what's in this uh, little video right here. But if he's talking about, I think he might be talking about, yeah, is that vocab's thing? Okay, I think he's talking about when I was on vocab's live stream and I said that once I realized he had lied to me, um, and was breaking the deal. I wanted to walk off stage. So they're probably, I haven't watched that. I don't know what they're putting in there, but uh, they're probably taking a clip where I said I wanted to walk off stage. No, you see, he's afraid of me. Oh, yes. He was afraid of me. I actually got that. I actually got that from you, Robert. Um, when we did that two, yeah, when we did that two on two debate and uh, the, uh, you know, Imam or whatever he was just kept, I mean, broke all the agreements during that last 10 minutes in Philadelphia. Broke all every every rule they applied to us. He went one by one and broke all of those rules. And you were about to walk out. You were just going to get up and walk out, or you're going to speak out. And I just said, "No, calm down, calm down. We'll we'll, we'll get out of here after a second stuff." So afterwards, I was thinking, "No, he sh we should have got up and walked out as soon as they broke as soon as they broke an agreement. We should have got up and walked out of that place." And so when it was. It was later when I debated Muhammad Hijab, and they make me, the Muslim side makes me agree to all these terms. You will agree, no personal attacks. You will agree that you will be friendly the entire time. You will keep the entire conversation friendly. You will not go off topic and address something else and so on. So then as soon as I start seeing him just hurling insults, it's like, oh, you're, you're another one of these guys. You're one of these guys who makes up a bunch of rules that you know I will keep because I have integrity and that you will not keep because you have none and you don't believe that you're obligated to ha to honor your agreements. And so I told vocab in an interview on a live stream, I said, uh, I said, my, my inclination was just to walk off stage, right? So go up there, talk for a while. And this happened repeatedly throughout the debate. It's like, what? Okay. He's, he's breaking it again. He's breaking the rules again. He's breaking the rules again. Why am I staying? Why am I sitting here? Why am I not walking off? Get up, talk a little while. And uh, each time it was sort of, ah, eh, these people showed up any i'd get up and i'd look at the audience and eh, these people showed up why am i gonna walk why am i gonna punish all of them for you know hijab and so on but it actually it actually affected things because sometimes i wasn't paying attention to them because i was thinking oh, i'm just gonna walk off stage anyway why am i why do i need to uh why do i need to uh flow the flow the entire debate and and write down all his points and so on but uh so notice notice hijab well, I watched that debate and he wasn't paying attention to you either he was just heaping insult upon insult he had no arguments whatsoever all he did was like you said last night, thump his chest and say his arguments were the best and he was uh, he was speaking the truth. And I, I'm not even going to pay attention to this guy. I'm not even going to speak to him. I'm not going to answer any of his points. Well, of course he wasn't because he couldn't. Yeah, and now, but look at this. What, why, when you had the chance to destroy me, you wanted to run away? I wanted to run away because you're a liar like your God and your prophet, right? <laughs> I wanted to walk off stage because someone, you guys just keep getting away with this and your own fans do not hold you accountable. You can tell, you can announce to your own fans, ha ha, I lied to him and they'll cheer you on, right? Just like they cheer you on when you heap abuse on people and when you call women names. And look, you, look, I just said call women names. Look at the very next, the very next tweet here. Uh, David Wood mocks and laughs at, um, that's oh, uh, his nickname, his nickname. Is that for, a prostate prophet? That's a prostate. Oh, that's his that's a nick, wife. Yeah, the nickname for the apostate prophet's wife. Uh, yeah. I'm certainly not laughing and mocking uh, her. Uh, I am mocking um, Hijab's comments about this. And this was right before, of course, I uh, took a bite out of the Quran. And hang on. Now, now here we go. Here, here's, here's the funny part. <laughs> okay, so let's skip this and go right back to it. Um, so this is Hijab. And he says, almost a year has passed. Let's arrange this. Let's see if you are a man of your word. And if you are brave as you claim, this is uh, Muhammad Hijab challenging Sam Shamoon to a fight. <laughs> right? So, <laughs> so he's got, look, enough talking. Enough talking. So he's got the picture of uh, Sam Shamoon there. And enough talking. 
And and then after challenging Sam Shamoon to a fight here, then he says, also, if your friend David Wood is a big man, let him have a legal bout with me also. Let's see what he will be spitting out then. And his wife and and his wife and Marie and the kids can watch their husband slash dad get decimated legally, physically, just as we dealt with him intellectually. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I, this guy, you must have hired this it, guy. He, he can't he, be real. He, he must be an actor. This is all a big show right this is another yeah. this is islamicized me taken to the next level and muhammad hijab is really a christian evangelist that you persuaded to to grow the beard and take on the persona am i right yeah, can it, we announce that now yeah, tonight? It, yeah here here's here's what's hilarious it's i had only watched i mean i had i'd met muhammad hijab uh at the debate and saw how he acted and so on apart from that i had only watched a couple of his videos when I started, you know, doing this little impersonation of him during live streams and so on. You know, uh, uh, me, me hijab, me strong, me, me strong than you. Uh, uh, you know, uh, and I started doing that impression. What's hilarious is now that I, <laughs> the more I learn about him, he's like worse than my, than my parody of him. He's worse. Yeah. He's actually worse, right? I'm sitting there here, me strong, me, me strong, me crush you. And then we, we go to his Twitter page. I challenge you to fight me. I challenge you to face me and fight me. Uh, uh, me strong. Uh, you, you will be defeated physically as you are intellectually. Wow. You couldn't make this, you couldn't make this dude up. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, just wanted to point out Sam Shamoon will be with me tomorrow night, Lord willing on the live stream and we will respond to Mr. Hijab's challenges. So don't want to miss that. Uh, and Muhammad Hijab, if you want to uh, show up in the chat. Uh, well, I don't know. You might start talking about the golden showers and stuff like that. But anyway. All right. Roberts. A lot of yes, thing, a lot of. Uh, I didn't see a lot of news coverage of this uh, of this our topic for tonight. Um, I, I am on some mailing lists and so on where I got news about this. But why don't you go back and start at the beginning and I have an uh, article I can pull up and so on for some of the details and so on. But why don't you give everyone... Uh, well, for, first, but even before that, even before we get into this particular issue, since we've been dealing with... <laughs> we've been dealing with some of these people for a long time. Um what we the story that we have is going to be about a college professor who said some things about the relationship between Islamic terror and Islamic teachings. But you've been saying these things for a long time. Pamela Geller's been pointing these things out for a long time. I've been pointing these things out for a long time. What is the reaction from, well, one, Muslim organizations like CARE on the one hand, but also from... Um, non-Muslim organizations that are just sort of heavy left as far as um, as far as what you're saying? Well, the leftist organizations in the United States and in Western Europe are completely in the pocket of the Islamic organizations. So the Islamic groups like CARE say that it is false, that Islam has anything to do with violence or terrorism, and that anybody who says so is a racist, bigoted Islamophobe. This has been a strategy they've pursued for two decades or more. They uh, care even back in the 90s before 9-11. They uh, successfully got the uh, Hollywood producers of the movie of The Sum of All Fears, a Tom Clancy novel in which there were Islamic terrorists, to change the Islamic terrorists to Nazis. Because, of course, it would be terrible and it would make not, uh, Muslims who are peaceful feel frightened if there were Islamic terrorists depicted. Now this in itself, of course, is absurd mm -hmm. because after all, the depiction of the Nazis, no Germans who are peaceful go around saying, you can't depict Nazis because that makes us feel threatened. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a transparently absurd claim, and yet it has become accepted in the mainstream. That that and would so, that would actually be a, yes, sir. That would be a funny video project for the future where we reenact <laughs> We reenact, let's say, the uh, the attack on the on the cartoon contest that that you guys had, but we make them like 
white supremacists in order to avoid hurting <laughs> hurting feelings and make them like complete rednecks and stuff like that. Uh, <laughs> you know something, David, that's something I've wanted to do for a long time. And I still think it could be done. And so if there are any Hollywood producers who see this, contact me at director at jihadwatch.org. Uh, this is the, the, think about this. What if you had a movie about a guy in America in 2020 who said, I went into a cave and an angel appeared to me and I'm a prophet. And he gathered around a group of followers, just a small group to start with, and was at odds with the people in his town who didn't like him because they had a thriving tourist trade based around a religious shrine that was in that town. And they thought he was threatening their business by saying that the shrine was illegitimate. And then he moves to another town. He starts to actually send armed squads of vigilantes against the, 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 the people who are going in and out of the town he came from. And, well, you get the idea. You take the whole story of Muhammad... You never mention Muhammad. You never mention Islam. You transpose the whole story to to contemporary America. Don't change a thing mm -hmm. except the names of all the principles and the fact that it has anything to do with Islam. You don't mention it at all. Mm -hmm. Now, this story would have nothing to do with Islam except that you would know and I would know, and now I guess the world will know because the cat's out of the bag since I'm saying it here, that it was all based on the Islamic sources, mm -hmm. on Ibn Ishaq, on Bukhari, on all the rest of them. And that, But we would never mention it. Mm -hmm. The Islamic groups would still go crazy, even though they would not have to take the bait. They, it's 100% certain that they would. It was, it's just like the billboards a few years back that uh, somebody put up saying, the perfect man married a nine-year-old girl, mm -hmm. uh, led uh, six, beheaded 600 Jews, and all these things never mentioned Muhammad or Islam or the Quran, and Islamic groups complained mm -hmm. because they knew what was going on. But they really, they, if they had had any sense, they wouldn't have complained. They would have said, this has nothing to do with our wonderful, peaceful prophet. He didn't do any of these things, mm -hmm. but they, they, they didn't have the wit. So I, I think it would be a great movie, a terrific movie about a false prophet and a liar, a con man who gains some power and ultimately changes the entire world. Yeah, we might. Uh, we could even make it Chinese. <laughs> and Chinese. <laughs> and make it a and make it a make it a kung fu movie just to make it as 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 just to throw people off yeah. as much as possible. Have it like this Great. This dude, he just starts getting visions and he starts attacking everyone with his kung fu and, uh, and, uh, <laughs> something. Or, yeah. Or yeah, make it, make it, uh, make it aliens and aliens show up. Uh -huh. Yeah, we do something. We are, uh, we, we're, we're planning a, a while back. Um, it's funny. It's funny. Um, these guys, uh, they send me messages regularly. We're going to kill you. You're going to rape your wife. We're going to do all these things. But respect our prophet, and uh, you know when they when when things reach a certain threshold, then I'll decide something you know something mean to do. But we, we want to make a. I don't know if you ever saw. I don't know if you were ever into horror movies. I was when I was younger. But there were movies uh, called. Been a fan. Yeah, uh, I'm not anymore. But uh, back then I was. But there are these movie these sort of gore movies called Evil Dead, where there's all these demonic possessions going on and things like that. But we're thinking about renting a cave somewhere, and having having Muhammad's, you know, when he started getting his revelations in the cave, but have it like an hour and a half horror movie of uh, his interactions with demons in the cave yes. and so on before he comes out and declares that he's a, he's a prophet. It's all, it's all right there in Bukhari at the very first Hadith. Mm -hmm. There, it's all there. It would make a terrific horror movie. Yep. People don't know. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, we mentioned, so we mentioned, uh, you, you have, of course, groups like CARE. How stupid have people been in falling for the claims of the Southern Poverty Law Center? Because... Well, you know, that's just an ongoing problem. Mm -hmm. It's incredible to me, and it's so ludicrous uh, that the only thing I can think, and I'm, I don't have any evidence of this, maybe it isn't true, but I do wonder. The Southern Poverty Law Center has an incredible amount of money. You know, David, 
I gave money to the Southern Poverty Law Center in the 1980s mm-hmm. when I was a young leftist and I thought they were doing good work. And of course, maybe they were doing good work in those days. They were fighting against racism and so on, or at least they said they were. Mm-hmm. Uh, nowadays, they've run out of racists and they've expanded their targets and they're doing pernicious work, but they have hundreds of millions of dollars. I wonder if that's behind some of the uncritical support that they get for from pretty much entire the entire mainstream media, all the big social media corporations, they just take their word as gospel. They're, they're considered to be infallible in matters of what constitutes a hate group and what doesn't. Nobody ever thinks to question them or wonder if maybe they're making a mistake, maybe they have their own agenda, maybe they're pressing their case, and so on. Yeah, uh, but uh, yeah, people are very stupid to take what they say at face value and not examine it. If you look at the rap sheet on me, it's full of uh, uh, false conclusions, false constructions mm-hmm. of things I said, things ripped out of context mm-hmm. in a genuine manner. Uh, there's nothing to it really at all. One of the things they, they uh, I, I'm constantly called a white supremacist because people confuse me with Richard Spencer. But a lot of times when I say, no, you got the wrong guy. I'm not a white supremacist. They double down because the Southern Poverty Law Center has has an article about how I'm a white nationalist. Mm -hmm. And their evidence is that there is a book on a reading list that was attached to an article I wrote Mm -hmm. that they say is a white nationalist book. Now, the fact is, I did not Mm -hmm. compile that reading list. I didn't see it before publication. And I've never read the book. So Mm -hmm. it has nothing to do with me at all. Yes. And also, I'm sure it's not a white nationalist book anyway, because they, they anybody's a white nationalist to them. Mm-hmm. But this is just a, an, an indication of how ludicrous this whole thing is. Yeah, uh, I have a, a comment here from Artemio Ortega. He said, I support the, the Southern Poverty Law Center. And yeah, Artemio, uh, you may you may support the Southern Poverty Law Center because you've seen them after after some sort of racist incident coming out and saying, well, we're the ones who actually uh, we're the ones who actually fight this racism. Uh, no, as Robert pointed out a couple decades ago, that may have been the case when they were suing the KKK into, uh, you know, into bankruptcy and so on, when they were trying to do things like that. Now, what they do is they take people who are criticizing any position that they have to, that they happen to disagree with. So if you are against jihad, right? I mean, at the end of the day, that's what Robert Spencer does, right? He's against <clears throat> jihad. They will lump you together with a bunch of like white supremacists and white nationalists and, and all these hate groups. And, and they put you all on the same list. And then that list is used to cancel you wherever you go. So wherever you go, wherever you speak, to, it's, it's used to get you taken down. So when uh, Robert was kicked off Patreon, that's what it was, right? It was Visa ordering Patreon to take Robert down because he's a hate monger and he's on the Southern Poverty Law Center's hate list. So take him down. Well, what's he on the Southern Poverty's list for well officially he's a white nationalist why because of this this is connected to this is connected to this is connected to this is connected to this really none of us come do any of his comments ever have have anything to do with white nationalism no but there you know we can establish this connection which you could do with anyone right you could pick anyone you want in the world right you could go right now to barack obama and make connections to white nationalists if you wanted to right well he's connected to this which is connected to that which is connected to this aha and, well, it's also because of what I say about Islam, David. And yeah. so they'll get around to you as well, of course, as you know, eventually. Yeah. Uh, just yesterday, actually, I did an interview with a guy who said he was looking at the Southern Poverty Law Center page on me, and they all, had all these quotes that I say about Islam. Uh, I don't know exactly what quotes they are because I don't go to that page. It's kind of depressing. But uh, he was saying he was reading these and thinking, well, yeah, okay. What's the problem here? Like mm-hmm. I'm saying Islam has doctrines of violence, which is what got me banned from Britain, saying that doc- Islam has doctrines of warfare against unbelievers. Mm-hmm. Well, stop the presses. That's really something that I made up. People have known Islam has doctrines of warfare against unbelievers for 1,400 years, and Muslims themselves say it routinely. Uh, why is Ali Dawa calling for the killing of apostates? Because these are doctrines of violence that are in Islam. But he's not banned from Britain because he's for them. You have to be against them to get banned and to get on the SPLC list. Yeah, I uh, I was put on a on a hate group list once, and I looked, and the evidence that was given was, and this is a man who made a video titled uh, "Muhammad was a sex addict," 
And in that video, which anyone can watch right now, you can go to type in Muhammad was a sex addict. It was, look, here are all these Muslim sources talking about Muhammad having sex with between 9 and 11 women and girls in a single night. And I said, today, if we saw someone going from one woman to the next 9 to 11 times a night, we would say that man has that man's a sex addict. But think about it. We're, it, it the, the culture is so insane that you could say that about anyone. If you said it about anyone in the entire planet, gosh, this guy has sex with 9 to 11 women and girls in a night. If you said he's a sex addict, everyone say, yeah, he's, that man's got an issue, right? But because it's Muhammad, you're an actual hate group for saying it. So, That's it. Yeah, so wild, Same thing. Wild See, this is why I think the movie would be great. The movie would show this guy who does all the things that Muhammad does, but we we don't say it's Muhammad. Mm -hmm. So everybody should be able to watch this movie and say, wow, this is a terrible person who did evil things. Yeah. And no, uh, no Muslim group should be upset because it's not Muhammad. It's just some guy. But we'll just use Ibn Ishaq as the source for the screenplay. Mm -hmm. And, and be great. And could... Uh... You'd have to have a big budget, but for for a small for a smaller budget, we we could, as as you mentioned yesterday, reenact some hadiths. And those would be yep. relatively cheap, but don't don't include the name, but just change all the names and change the gear and put Muhammad in these exact same situations, but call him Jeff, yeah, and watch people be horrified at how <laughs> sick and twisted this guy is. Yeah, yeah. Um. Some people uh, have asked about the possibility of suing groups like the Southern Poverty Law Center. I think it's harder oh, to yeah. I think it's harder to sue in the U.S., but easier in the U.K. for for things like defamation. Because uh, who was it in the U.K. Yeah. who sued them and and won and they they paid like I think over oh, a million what was that dollars. Guy's name Majid Nawaz. Yeah, Majid Nawaz sued them, and he's a moderate Muslim. I actually he's a leftist as well, and I, I saw the complaint that his. Uh, lawyers had written and it was very skillfully done because they they were able to say look he's he's on the left he agrees with you mm -hmm. southern poverty law center on all your agenda well, now of course i can't say that because mm -hmm. i actually do stand against a lot of these things that the southern poverty law center stands for and so that wouldn't cut any ice but also yes the uh british law as far as i understand it the burden of proof is on the defendant in a libel case but on in the united states the burden of proof is on the plaintiff mm. and so i would have to prove malice and they would of course say no this is the we didn't mean this fellow any harm we just uh this is a dispassionate evaluation and really the problem comes down to money uh there was a uh, actually when i i was mentioning before when i spoke for that republican group in uh new england the dem the state democratic leader called me a white supremacist in the local newspaper. And so I actually had a lawyer write to him and tell him this is false and defamatory and you should retract it. And his lawyer wrote back with Southern Poverty Law Center stuff. And so that was where it ended because my lawyer said they have hundreds of millions of dollars. We can't take them on. They'll, they'll, there's no doubt they would win. And other lawyers I have contacted have said the same thing. One of them actually was willing to take my case, but he said he would need a significant amount of money and I can't get it because i can't raise money on these places like patreon and gofundme actually i've been reinstated to patreon but i haven't done anything with it mm. uh because of the same splc by the way i i know why they reinstated you people started people started suing them for for taking them Good. off and uh they're the, those people are winning and patreon might actually collapse because they uh, they had all these things in their terms of service, and then they were violating their own terms of service, and uh, so they started trying to change their terms of service. So yeah, people started suing them, and the courts started ruling in the people's favor, saying, "Yep, you can't you you can't you can't violate your own terms of service." And and basically the ruling was that uh, Patreon, I think it was that Patreon was severing other people's contracts. That when people were signing on to be a patron for someone, that there's a kind of contract and. Patreon yeah. is basically the middleman in that contract, and then Patreon's saying, "Well, we're we're just severing this contract." Well, wait, I didn't, you, you didn't agree to sever the contract, and that yeah. person didn't agree to it. And who in the world is Patreon to step in there and say, "Nope, we're doing this because," so, yep, yeah. that's what they did to me at Patreon, GoFundMe, and Indiegogo. At all three of them, I was raising money. Uh, in GoFundMe and Indiegogo, I was raising money for 
suing the Southern Poverty Law Center mm. after having been banned from Patreon. But in all three cases, uh, there were there was a significant amount of support, and it was just unilaterally returned to the uh, to the donors because without be- any notice or warning or any choice in the matter. Because all of those companies probably to get their advice from the Southern Poverty Law Center. Oh, so they, you, um, no yeah. doubt about it. Yeah. So, so you start you start raising money to sue the Southern Poverty Law Center, and the Southern Poverty Law Center goes to the company and says that he's a hate group and shut him down, and they do it. There well, you go. And you better shut him down, or we'll label you a hate group. Oh, sure. Gosh, I better. <laughs> uh, now, guys, th- th- it seems that uh, we 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 do have we do have a topic, but all of oh, this yeah, is all of this topic. is all of this is actually connected because all of this kind of leads up to the topic, which is why I'm uh, going along along these lines of all these sort of earlier experiences. Like uh, uh, he got banned from Britain. Well, one of the things I've noticed, right? So, so there's a question here. He got banned from Britain. <laughs> yes, yeah, I'm banned from Britain. Robert Spencer is not allowed in Great Britain, and it's because he and Pamela Geller wanted to go. Uh, that was the funeral of, of Lee Rigby, right? Yeah, Lee we were going to lay a wreath at the memorial for Lee Rigby. We weren't going even going to speak. Yeah, but so that you're, was wait, you're going now. Now, keep in mind, uh, if you don't, if you guys don't remember, two jihadis who were connected to Anjum Chowdhury. Uh, basically beheaded a soldier uh, in in the the middle of the the streets. Was that was that London? I'm guessing. Yes. Yeah. It was beheaded London. beheaded a Old soldier Old named Lee Rigby Old in the streets of London, and and <clears throat> ma- and ma- and then recorded a video. <laughs> the guy yeah. sitting there being the guy's recorded, standing there with a cleaver full uh, with blood all over it. Yep. And explaining how the Quran and so on direct him to do this kind of thing. Citing Surah at Tauba. He's citing yeah. Surah 9. Um, and so, I mean, my goodness, you, you'd think that this would be a kind of wake-up call that you need to deal with the ideology. Instead, <laughs> Great Britain declares, hey, what we really need to be worried about here is that people might actually point to the cause of this terrorist attack. And so we need to keep people like Robert Spencer and Pamela Geller as far away from Great Britain as possible. Um, we'll have all the, we'll have, all the jihadis in the world are welcome here. All the jihadis in the world, you're welcome. You're welcome to go chop people's heads off if you want. But under no circumstances can we have anyone who, who might want to discuss the actual cause of this attack. Yeah, that was the only reason they gave. I was I was actually right here in this office, right in this same place, and I saw out uh, the my office window the FedEx truck drive up, and he has this uh, uh, whatever you call it certified letter or something official letter from the UK Home Office. He said it's from the UK Home Office. The FedEx guy was impressed, <laughs> and I. Uh, I, I open it up, and it says that you have said, and it quoted me from something, saying that Islam has doctrines mandating warfare against and the subjugation of unbelievers. And we are afraid you're going to say that again if you come to Britain, and therefore you can't come. It didn't say you're a criminal, you have a criminal record, because I don't. It didn't say you call for violence, because I don't. It didn't say anything except that I said something they don't like. That is absolutely true. And it, it, notice this is a uh, this is very similar, very similar to the issue we're going to be talking about now with care suing people for saying something, even if what you're saying is entirely true, just not allowed to say it. Like uh, who was that Elizabeth Sadish Wolf who Sabadich, yeah, Sabadich Elizabeth Sabadich Wolf, yeah, yeah she, she was. Uh, go ahead. Oh yeah, so she was tried and found guilty and had to. Uh, tried and found guilty for calling Muhammad a pedophile. When... And it was at a private conversation, David. Wow. She was giving a private seminar. It was not open to the public, but they had an infiltrator in it who went up to her in private. She didn't even say it to the seminar group, mm. but in private during a break, this infiltrator mm. asked her if she thought that Muhammad was a pedophile. And she was well, he, he consummated the marriage with the nine-year-old and so on, which is, of course, in the Islamic sources. And that is what she was convicted of hate speech for. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, just think think about how all this stuff is, is connected. Robert Spencer exposes the link between Muhammad commanding his followers to 
waged terrorist attacks and people today waging terrorist attacks, and that makes him a hate group. I said, hey, if Muhammad had sex with 9 to 11 women and girls in a single night, we'd call that a sex addict. Up, uh, hate group. <laughs> Elizabeth over in Europe, hey, Muhammad had sex with a nine-year-old girl. We call that a pedophile. Guilty. Guilty. It doesn't matter if it's true or not. It's just, is this something that will hurt the feelings of a group that you're not allowed to to offend? And uh, that is absolutely right. insane. Violating all our own principles, which have made the West great. And we're throwing them in the garbage to avoid hurting the feelings of people who's uh, many who come, many of them come from areas where things have failed politically and economically, and they come to the West, and then hey, we need to then adopt the systems of the countries where you came from, and uh, yeah. that's going to make things better. My goodness, are we more? You know something else, David? Hmm. You said uh, to avoid hurting their feelings, and I think people might that fly might fly by without people realizing what an important phrase that is, because in in, in at Jihad Watch. Uh, where I track, of course, jihad terror activity every day, uh, I have come across innumerable stories, news articles, of people in Pakistan or Indonesia, most commonly, but also in other places, where people have been arrested and prosecuted on the charge of hurting the feelings of Muslims mm -hmm. by insulting Islam. And hurting the feelings of Muslims is actually... A criminal offense or effectually a criminal offense in many Sharia states. And there is uh, th there are actually similar rules on platforms like YouTube. Um, after the uh, after the shooting in New Zealand, uh, the mosque shooting in New Zealand, uh, YouTube announced that it was uh, putting together new hate speech policies and that you you can't say certain things that might offend a protected group. They don't tell you what the protected group is, that you just start finding out when your videos get taken down, when your videos get, you know, start uh, being accused of being hate speech, you start finding out, oh, anyone in Islam is a is a protected group. What's, what's crazy is the way that it is actually worded. I have screenshots when they send me something like this. Um, this, it, it says, is th this is a video that could offend someone in a protected group. It's like, wait a minute. What what do you what do you what could you say that might <laughs> that might not offend someone of the 1.6 billion Muslims yeah. in the world, right? What could you possibly unless you're saying Allahu Akbar, Muhammad is a true prophet and Allah is the only god. Unless you're saying that, anything else you could possibly say um, might offend Muslims. So how could that possibly be a criterion, and yet it is. It is here on YouTube. They haven't. They they've said they're they're implementing these things slowly. They're unfolding, the they're unfolding the implementation of these rules more and more. But that is the rule. You cannot offend someone from a protected group, and Muslims are a protected group. So atheists aren't. That's just a Sharia law. Yeah, atheists aren't a protected group. Christians aren't. So you can blast away at Christians. You can blast away at atheists. But if you're if you're hurt, you know, if you're if you're saying something that could offend Muslims, well, they're a protected group. So wow, this is insane. Oh. Absolutely insane. That reminds me also of Quran 434, the, the, that you can uh, from women from whom you fear disobedience, you, fear yeah. mm -hmm. you can beat them. Well, is is there a woman in the world from whom I can, might not nope. fear disobedience? So you can beat them that, all. That opens it up to anybody, yeah, without this, any exception. This is wild, wild stuff. All right, before we before we uh, check out this this topic, just wanted look at this guy here, Igor Ivanov. Igor Ivanov, I'm a white nationalist. You're a moron. <laughs> Igor here says he's a white nationalist. Come on, dude. Of all the things, of all the things you can divide people up on, you're going to do it uh, based on the amount of the amount of melanin in your skin. Could be a moron, dude. And and I'm saying that I mean there is personal interest here. Um, I'm uh I'm pretty darn white. My wife is half Asian. Um, my brothers are one quarter Latino. Um, my wife. My, my wife's sister, so two sisters, my wife's sister um, married, so my wife's sister is half Asian, half white. She married a man who's half white, half black. 
uh, if you you can kind of go down the list to all of my friends. I mean, you've got vocab. Vocab's Italian, but his adopted kids are Hispanic. Uh, John is black. John McRae is black, married to a white woman, right? You could go down the list. Everyone I'm connected to would not be allowed <laughs> in your in your white nation. So look, you want a white you want a white nation? Go somewhere else. Leave us all alone, and then we don't have to listen to your your stupid nonsense anymore. Absolutely. All right, all right Robert. Wait, wait a minute. Yes, Robert said absolutely. He he agreed with the stuff. How are you a white nationalist, Robert? I don't. <laughs> I got the proof. I got the I'm the a case very bad one. The case cracker right now. All right. Let's get into this topic now. All right, yes. so we, we've, we've gotten the background that all this stuff has been going on a long time. You'd think that people would be uh, coming to their senses, and yet you still have groups like CARE trying to silence. And that, that's the connecting thread that in everything we were just talking about, people trying to silence uh, any sort of criticism against Islam. And it completely goes against everything that we're supposed to stand for in the West, right? If you want, if something bothers you, you can, you can say it, uh, but not about Muhammad. So what's going on? Okay. This, uh, this story comes out of Arizona and it is a story of a class taught, uh, in the world politics department by a professor named Nicholas Damask. And he was teaching about terrorism, gave a test that had these three questions on it. Number one, who do terrorists strive to emulate? Oh, wait a wait and a minute! Course, don't yeah. don't you don't you have those in your in your article? Yeah, they're in the article. Let me uh, let me pull up the article, and that way, yeah. So this is an article. First article. Yeah, let me pull that up real quick, and then we can read them along with you. Uh, okay. All right, and scroll down to them. So he was giving a test. All right, I have them on the screen now. Yeah. So right, this ahead. is from Damascus test. And it says, who do terrorists strive to emulate? And of course, the answer is Muhammad. This is obviously manifestly true. The terrorists, Islamic terrorists, that is, and that's what he was specifically teaching about. This was not a general question about terrorists, although taken in isolation, it looks like one. It was about specifically Islamic terrorists. And that's clear from the statements of innumerable Islamic terrorists around the world for decades that they are emulating Muhammad. Mm -hmm. That is something that they themselves have frequently confessed. Uh, second, where is terrorism encouraged in Islamic doctrine and law? And the answer that uh, Professor Damascus was looking for was the Medina verses. That is, of course, the portion of the Quran where the doctrines of warfare against unbelievers are laid out. And number three, terrorism is blank in Islam, and that is justified within the context of jihad, which is also manifestly true, and also aid, abetted by statements of Muhammad, including things like, I have been made victorious with terror, and the fact that it's quite clear that he's speaking about uh, physical terror, uh, the, the clown uh, Asadullah, another Islamic apologist who he, he made some videos supposedly refuting my book, The History of Jihad, and he took issue with my quoting Muhammad saying, I've been made victorious through terror because he said, oh, he just means the fear of God. It's a concept that's in Judaism and Christianity as well. It has nothing to do with terrorism. And of course, the, the fear of God in Judaism and Christianity and in the Old and New Testaments has nothing, it doesn't say anything like Quran 8.12 which says, I will strike terror in the unbelievers, strike their necks and strike mm -hmm. off their fingertips. That's an odd kind of fear of God. But mm -hmm. uh, the, in any case, the point here is that everything Damascus said was absolutely, obviously true. Mm -hmm. And to anybody who is simply interested in an accurate delineation of the ideological roots of terrorism, it would be completely uncontroversial. But a student in the class named Muhammad Sabra, a Muslim student, said that uh, he was offended by the questions, offended by the questions, and that they were, quote, in distaste of Islam. And so his problem with these questions is that they are in distaste. That is, they show, at least to Muhammad Sabra, that Nicholas Damask did not like Islam very much, which may actually not be the case. If Anwar al-Laki, for example, had been teaching the class 
and had asked exactly the same three questions and had gotten exactly the same three answers, it would not be at all a reasonable conclusion that Anwar al was in distaste of Islam, that he didn't like Islam. He would love it. Mm -hmm. But Nicholas Damask, obviously he's not a Muslim, and so Muhammad Sabra jumps to the conclusion that he was not reporting these completely readily establishable facts in a positive manner. And mm -hmm. therefore, he went to the Council on American Islamic Relations, CARE, and they sued Damascus and the Scottsdale Community College uh, for essentially what is viola a violation of Sharia, of Islamic law, that Islamic law forbids criticism of Islam. Damask had, in their view, criticized Islam, although really what he had done was what we do. He had reported accurately about what Islam teaches, which is not criticizing, and on that basis, they wanted him to be dismissed, they wanted him to be silenced, they wanted a, an apology from the Scottsdale Community College, and so on. And the story only gets worse from there. Yeah, and so, so guys, ch check out these questions. So you have, a, you have a couple of issues here, right? One, are, are these answers actually correct? Two, even, even if they weren't correct for some reason, like even if you thought a college professor got something wrong, that's that's not something you sue someone over, right? I'm sure if I went back through tests, I could I could find something that college professors got wrong, um, because I've taught a bunch of classes, and I probably got some stuff wrong, right? Um, and matter of fact, I know I did. I, I I'm, I'm I'm sure I did. I'm sure. Matter of fact, I remember. Gosh, I remember apologizing to students because I I had I had uh, I was using the you know A B C D E F G and so on, um, and I had marked things wrong because I was just looking at the letters and I had my I had my letters wrong. So if I could get that wrong, then there are obviously professors who can get something wrong. But my goodness, you're going to go out and sue someone? So that's one issue. Even if you got something wrong, because it's something you, you go to court over. But two, it's totally correct. So <laughs> notice, even if, even if you personally don't agree, which we know at the end of the day, CARE actually knows these answers are true. Of course. But even if you were a completely westernized Muslim who had never in your entire life studied the Muslim sources and you, you, you only absorbed what you, you know, what you heard from President Barack Obama about Islam and you thought it was wonderful and great, wouldn't, wouldn't it be, hey, let's get, let's get together and show us why you think that m Muslims strive to, to emulate Muhammad? Right? Why are you saying this? Because that's what they say. <laughs> because Muhammad said things like, um, I, I would love to be martyred in Allah's cause and then come back to life and then get martyred and then come back to life again and then get martyred and then come back to life again and then get martyred. That's a direct quote from Muhammad. He was obsessed with martyrdom. And so uh, <laughs> Muhammad is late, is presented as the pattern of conduct in the Quran and that's the emphasis. Hey, you want to be like Muhammad? He was obsessed with martyrdom. And so who are you striving to emulate, Muhammad? And yet, Kair says, nope, nope, we're going to sue you for stating the obvious. This is, this is just... It some... gets worse. Oh, yeah. It's even worse than that. Uh, even before we get to the suit. I mean, mm -hmm. that is ultimately what this is all about, and we will get to the suit, but there are a couple of other chapters in the story before we get to the suit, mm -hmm. and that is that uh, a social media campaign began against the professor. Once this got out, Mohammed Sabra apparently spread the news of this to the Muslim community at Scottsdale Community College in Arizona, and uh, the this college's Instagram account started to fill up with what Damask says were uh, angry, threatening, inflammatory, and derogatory messages about the quiz, the school, and myself. And so note, he started to get death threats, and he had to go with his family into hiding because wow. he was getting death threats. And why was he getting death threats? The irony here is so thick, I can barely even enunciate this. The fact is he was getting death threats for saying Islam was not a religion of peace. He was getting death threats from Muslims for saying that Islam has a connection to terrorism. That that is funny. I just got a I just got a uh, death threat yesterday, and uh, it's someone who's mad about me saying that Islam promotes violence, and uh, so he's going to come and kill me. 
said he's, he's praying to yeah, he's I've praying to those. he's praying to Allah that he will be the one who gets to come and kill me so that uh, you know he can refute he can refute me <laughs> this is <laughs> this is a, so wait so I, again I haven't I haven't been I never followed this story very closely uh, I saw articles pop up I got the gist and so on but so you're saying that this man put a couple of put a couple of questions on his test that pointed out that terrorists are striving to follow Muhammad, things like that. And in response, once this information got out that he had said that there's a connection between Islam and terrorism, he had to go into he and his family had to go into hiding because of the death threats. From people yes. who are saying we're going to come from, kill them, from, clearly from Muslim students, we're going to go kill them. this guy for saying that our religion is violent. This is, well, yes, the the one of the things that was uh, uh, written on the Instagram account, just so we can see who it was coming from, was I wish everything bad on these kufar. I hope he suffers. Drop the professor's address here. I just want to go talk to him. Uh, you get the idea. But yep. the use of the word kufar, of course, on believers makes it very clear these were not uh, leftists. This was not Antifa that was coming after him. And it gets worse, David. It, it gets, gets worse, even than that. worse than that. Okay. Yes, even before we get to the lawsuit. Uh, Damask, the professor, had a conference call with Scottsdale Community College's Dean of Instruction, well, that's Kathleen... Not that's not Was bad. That? That's not bad that the university is coming to his defense from all these people who <laughs> are threatening to kill him. That's why well, you said it gets worse. Now it's getting better. It, now the administration <laughs> is stepping in to defend their professor from people who want to do him harm over something he said. I mean, imagine a world where you would do someone harm over something he said. It's it's a good thing. This is a good thing. This is not worse, Robert. This is better. The university is coming to his rescue. Go ahead. In the same world, yes, but this is Scottsdale Community College, which is part of American academia. That is not a sane world. Uh, the Scottsdale Community College officials in the first place put a new post on their Instagram account where, remember, Damascus is in the middle of getting death threats, and they say that Mohammed Sabra was right, Damask was wrong, and that Mohammed Sabra would receive an apology from Damask. They had not cleared this with Damask. They just wrote that he was going to get it and and would receive full credit. The student, Muslim student who was offended, would receive full credit for all the quiz que questions that offended him. So he had, uh, the, Muhammad Sabra has discovered at Scottsdale Community College a way to get an A without studying, a way to get an A without doing a thing. All he has to do is say he's offended. So Kathleen Uticello, the Dean of Instruction, and Eric Sells, the public relations marketing manager of this college, they talk to Damask, and they say, tell him, you're going to apologize, and we're going to write your apology, and it's going to go out under your name. And they say, he, Damask says there was no discussion of academic freedom. There was no discussion of whether the college was supportive of me to even continue to teach about Islamic terrorism. And... He said that uh, he wasn't going to do this. And so they had several more calls. There was back and forth. And then he says, during one call with Uticello, she stated that my quiz questions were Islamophobic and that before continuing to have any further class content on Islamic terrorism, I would likely need to meet with an Islamic religious leader to go over the content. Selected by... I would likely Selected by care, I'm sure. Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. And that I would likely need to take a class taught by a Muslim before teaching about Islamic terrorism any further. And so the college completely threw him under the bus. They were ready to force him to apologize. And that was when Damask started to contact groups like including the David Horowitz Freedom Center and David Horowitz uh, referred him to me. I wrote the first article about what was going on. Other people wrote articles about what was going on and uh, the college was embarrassed and actually backed off. And that's when the lawsuit came in. 
that care. See, they thought they had victory in sight. They thought they were going to get him fired or at very least silenced, publicly disgraced, humiliated. He has to go listen to their dawah presentation from some local imam. And instead, the college backed off. Hmm. And then they sued. And they said that Muhammad Sabra's rights under the First Amendment had been violated. And what they're essentially suing for, as I said, it's, it's, they're, they're assuming that criticism of Islam is illegal and wrong. And mm -hmm. so this was a very important case because this is something that Islamic groups have been trying to get in the United States for years. And no doubt they're going to keep trying. The Organization of Islamic Cooperation, 57 Muslim governments, since 2005, when the Muhammad cartoons first appeared in the Danish newspaper Jilans Posten, they have been trying to get the Western countries, and most importantly, the United States, to criminalize criticism of Islam. And so this was a very small push in the same direction by CARE. If they can get Scottsdale Community College to cave, if they can get the court to say, yes, you cannot criticize Islam in a uh, uh, classroom in a community college because it's hate speech, which of course is a completely subjective concept. You can twist any which way to silence whoever you want. Then they've won a major victory in bringing Sharia blasphemy laws into the United States. So that's what they were trying to do. And that is uh, that is so absolutely insane, right? It's uh, yeah. it's I've had lots of professors over the years, and lots of atheist professors, lots of Christian professors. I've had professors who were happy to make fun of atheism at certain points, uh, and I've had atheist professors who were happy to make fun of. Christianity or religion in general at certain points. I remember one, I had a uh, biology teacher, biology professor, taught anatomy and human physiology, human anatomy and physiology. And he would be explaining stuff and he would go, oh, but this just happened, right? This just happened. This just, this system just developed by the ones that did not having it, you know, dying out and so on. So he would say that he's just clearly making fun of people who didn't believe that this, that this is created. Um, it never, I don't think it crossed people's minds. We need to get this guy fired. We need to get this guy fired. Or professors who, you know, are clearly hostile towards Christianity. Suddenly you get to Islam. You get to Islam. And even if what you're saying is 100% true, like I'm sure, I'm sure if that uh, professor had uh, had a question on his test, uh, how old was Aisha when Muhammad had sex with her? And the correct answer was nine years old. Well, you just hurt the feelings of a Muslim student who didn't know that, and therefore, we have to sue you, and you need to uh, you need to apologize. I think I would or have knew that very well, but didn't want everybody else to know it. Yeah, I, I think uh, if I think I think if I were him, I would have apologized, but done it like really sarcastic fashion. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I apologize for stating a fact that hurts your feelings and. You know, I would never want to hurt your feelings with a fact, especially when your feelings are, you know, I would, I would have gone probably some of Well, you know, I think that Damask was willing to do that or willing to write something of his own. But the college, remember, was going to write his apology mm -hmm. and put it out under his name. And he had to accept it. Uh, and they were probably trying to forestall any possibility that he would take the advantage of that opportunity to heap sarcasm on this whole absurd affair. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, uh, well, what happened? So the court, they ruled yesterday morning. Yesterday uh, morning. So this just yesterday happened. Yesterday morning. This was Sabra versus Maricopa County Co uh, Community College District. And it was a ruling from Judge Susan M. Bernovich of the U.S. District Court for the District of Arizona. And, of course, this was... Uh, CARE's suit, really, not Sabra's. Sabra being just a college student, it was CARE lawyers who were arguing on his behalf. And Bernovich notes in her ruling that this case tests the limits of the First Amendment's religion clauses. And uh, man, you can say that again. That is really why this case is so important, because we either have the freedom of religion or we don't. Mm -hmm. But People don't realize, uh, few people seem to understand that a case like this cuts very uh, right to the heart of the freedom of religion. It's not really Muhammad Sabra's freedom of religion that was threatened. 
he could just go away thinking Nicholas Damask was wrong or a lout or a bad guy or who knows what and never think about him again. And no problem, no harm, no foul. But what he's trying to do is restrict the ability of Nicholas Damask and everyone else to speak honestly about this particular religion. Now, is, does the freedom of religion include the right to criticize a religion? Or does it, is it only about whether you can take one up or not your, yourself? And so this is how Brnovich approached the case. And that is very uh, all to the good. That's why we have good news ultimately at the end of this. Um, she said, and she set it out very clearly. She says, plaintiffs allege that Damascus instruction unconstitutionally concludes that Islam mandates terrorism. When I read that, I had to laugh. Do you have do you, you've read the U.S. Constitution, David? Have you not? Mm, yeah. And I've read it. Uh, my my new book, as a matter of fact, is about the American presidents. And uh, I read the Constitution again because I wanted to. The whole idea of it is evaluating them in light of the Constitution. In any case, I did not find anywhere in the Constitution the provision that it is prohibited to say that Islam mandates terrorism. Yeah, uh, yeah I and, that one too. Uh, yeah, and the, 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 they allege, the plaintiffs, that Damascus is not teaching that only some extremists espouse these beliefs, but rather that literally Islam itself mm -hmm. teaches the mandates of terrorism. Now, we've already discussed that's obviously readily established. It's manifestly true. It's not really even a hard or obscure point to find. And the nub of their argument, Bernovich says, is that the only objectively reasonable conclusion of Damascus' actions is that his primary message is the disapproval of Islam. And that to that I thought, well, yeah, so what? Maybe it was. Mm -hmm. Even that is not established, though, as we previously discussed. To speak the truth about Islam is not necessarily to disapprove of it. But even if he did disapprove of Islam, you know, you're talking about your professors. I remember I had a professor... Uh, I was uh, a very uh, young man, of course, going to college, and I was a young Christian, and there were people who told me, don't take this New Testament course from this particular professor, because he will rip your faith into shreds and hand it to you in a paper bag. And I thought, well, that's a very interesting image, but let me at him. I want to I see what challenges he has, because I don't want to have a faith that doesn't have any foundation. You know, I might as well just believe that Mickey Mouse is going to bring me candy every Thursday at two. It doesn't have any basis in reality. And so if that's what this guy is going to do, then I want him to do it in front of me. And I will not hate him for doing so. I will take up his challenge and see if I can deal with it. And I did. And we got to be good friends. I actually was his uh, research assistant uh, when I was getting my master's. But in any case... He disapproved of Christianity. Mm -hmm. So what? Nobody thought, like you said about the uh, the guys who were making fun of atheism, nobody thought, hey, let's take this guy to court. Let's complain about how he hates us. Uh, it, it's, it's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And so uh, Bernovich wrote, the religion clauses of the First Amendment provide that Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. And then she says, this includes not only government approval of religion, but its disapproval of or hostility toward religion. And while the free exercise clause, which applies to the states under the 14th Amendment, protects religious observers against unequal treatment and against laws that impose special disabilities on the basis of religious status, that does not mean that curriculum that merely conflicts with a student's religious beliefs violates the free exercise clause. So here's somebody, a judge who actually has sense, who actually understands the First Amendment and its importance, and who ruled against care and against Mohammed Sabra and in favor of Nicholas Damask's right to teach accurately and honestly about Islam. But the last thing, David, that I want to say about this case is that even though they lost, it's not completely a, vic a, a defeat for them and a victory for the forces of the good and the forces of truth, because, of course, they're going to keep pushing. They're going to keep trying to destroy the freedom of speech and bring Sharia blasphemy laws to the West. And also, this has not just been a lawsuit. This has been a campaign of intimidation. Mm -hmm. I would not be in the least surprised if the Scottsdale Community College administrators 
uh, after having gone through this and after having been ready to silence Nicholas Damask and throw him under the bus, if they wouldn't be ready to throw him under the bus at any opportunity they have in the future. And they're certainly going to be very wary about any kind of teaching that offends Islam. And any other college or university that hears about this case is going to be afraid. Don't teach about Islam and terrorism because we're going to get sued too. And who needs that headache? Mm -hmm. And so it, it, even just the fact that it all happened is a victory for the forces of evil. I'm sorry to say that, but we have to be realistic about what we're dealing with. Yeah, this is some uh, this is some messed up stuff. I mean, I mean, think about this, ladies and gentlemen. Care could actually be a respectable organization. Think about if they had hand if they had handled this differently. If Care had said, "We heard from a Muslim student in the class that there are some uh, questions about uh, Islam's connection to terrorism, and the student uh, had his feelings hurt by these things." And we'd like everyone to know that we disagree with the answers on that test, even though, obviously, from behind closed doors, we know he's absolutely correct. But publicly, <laughs> publicly, we disagree with this man's claims. So what we now, since we believe, even though we don't really, but since we pretend to uh -huh. believe in freedom of speech and Western values and so on, what we'd like to do is have an open public discussion about these issues and about these claims. And we'd like representatives of different perspectives to come and share their thoughts. And so we invite Robert Spencer and other people who maintain these things uh, to get together with us and have a televised discussion about this with various Muslim representatives. And let's see if we can get to the bottom of this. And even if they even if they were somehow able to make their case that nope, we believe here's why we believe Islam is peaceful, you would still find you would at the very least people would say, Oh, I see why these other guys say that Islam is actually connected to terrorism. I get it. I, I get why these Muslims don't, I get why these guys do. I get why this and therefore you can't really be going after a college professor from going with the obvious interpretation of these texts. If CARE went around doing things like that, I would look at that and I would say, wow, that's cool. But it's always about shutting down speech. It's always about silencing any open, honest discussion of Islam. It's never about, about increasing the public discussion. And the I don't trust people who do that. It, it doesn't have to do, I'm not just talking that's about right. Islam. Anyone who says, my goal is not to have an open, honest discussion about this issue. My goal is to make sure you never have an open, honest discussion about this yes. issue. And I have to silence anyone who disagrees with me. I don't care what position you could, even if you had a position that I agree with completely, I would look at that and say, I do not trust you. I do not yep. trust you. If you do not believe that your views or your claims can stand up to scrutiny and you think that the only way your view can get past people is to go around silencing the opposition, I do not, I, I don't trust you. I think yeah, you're, and yeah. you'd think people would catch on to it. Mm -hmm. You'd think that uh, when they say that Damascus has to go talk to an imam, and you know, invariably, so many times when I've spoken around the country, uh, care or some other Muslim group has said you should cancel this guy and let us bring you a Muslim speaker who will explain it all for you. And mm -hmm. I think, okay, well, I, I'll be glad to have a debate with your Muslim speaker, but they don't want that. They want me silenced, and the Muslim speaker who's going to say a lot of smooth lies, they want him out there, and he's the only one mm -hmm. that they want heard. And it's the same thing in this case. And so, yeah, it's, it's very suspicious, and you'd think that uh, people would catch on to them. And what ongoing mystifies me in an ongoing manner all these years is that these transparent cons seem to work again and again and again. Yeah, and uh, so, so the other issue is, is what you brought up towards the end there when you were saying that this isn't the end here. You know, this keeps going on. And something like this where it becomes public and it actually ends up being reported on, there are all kinds of... This continues in ways that it doesn't get reported on, right? Groups like CARE are constantly, <laughs> constantly, constantly badgering Twitter and Facebook and YouTube 
and everyone else saying, guys, you have to shut this down. These, these platforms are being used to spread Islamophobia. You have to make more rules, more rules cracking down on this hate speech. What's the hate speech? Pointing out anything, anything truthful about Muhammad. That's the, that's the hate speech. And so, my goodness, you, you just, you look at the two different civilizations here. And in Islamic civilization, you are not allowed to criticize Muhammad. You get your head chopped off for, for speaking about Muhammad. You get blasphemy laws. And then, uh, in the West, where we're supposed to know better, they do the exact same thing. They try to get the exact same thing to whatever extent they can, right? So it's not, they understand, hey, we can't get your head chopped off. We're not going to get a rule saying that your head will get chopped off or you'll be hanged for criticizing Muhammad. But the goal of a, of a, of a blasphemy law in a place like Pakistan is to keep people from talking about Muhammad. That's the point. Well, guess what? You can do that here as well. If you can sue people into bankruptcy and you can get them to lose their jobs, you can get them kicked off platforms, you can get them kicked off YouTube. Well, all of these are pretty pretty, uh, pretty important incentives um, to not talk about Muhammad. Or if you can somehow convince massive portions of the population and Hollywood and journalists and politicians, and you can convince all of them that the only possible reason anyone would ever object to Muhammad is just a hatred of brown people. If you can convince pe- if you can convince people of that, then when someone like Robert Spencer says, "Hey, look at what Islam teaches," well, guess what? Oh, the only possible reason he would be saying that is because of his hatred of brown people. Therefore, we need to shower him with abuse and have him canceled. And if you can actually do that, well, you get the same result. You're not, you're just not allowed to say it. Yeah, you don't get your head chopped off or you don't get hanged, but you can still get canceled. And guys, just don't lose sight of the fact that we look here and haha, we won this one. Or hey, you know, my video got taken down, but it got reinstated. The people who are trying to silence all of us are relentless. They yes. do not they do not sleep because there's so many of them that there there's always there are always groups coming after us. And the the trend is more and more submission to them, right? You never, you, yes. you, you never see what you, what you never see. And I have never seen is, you know what? You guys have been harassing me to, to, to block more people. You've been, you've been trying to convince my platform to block more people and to silence more people about your profit. You know what? I'm sick of this. Too bad. Too bad. People can talk about your profit. Shut up. If you don't like it, too bad learn that, right? And guess what? I would say the same thing to them if they tried to get me to shut you down. I would tell you, too bad. Learn to live with it. That This is this is, this is is the West. Welcome to it, right? But it's not. It's always, uh, it, it's, it's almost like, it's almost like they back down as much as they can. The, the platforms, you know, Twitter, YouTube, yeah. and so on. They back down as much as they can without just losing mass mass numbers of their users, right? Because if they came out, if if YouTube came out tomorrow and said, you know what, we're enforcing Sharia blasphemy laws, we're just gonna <laughs> we're just gonna kick off anyone who disagrees with uh, with Muhammad. Well, you know, they'd lose like half of their users. So there's there are enough people who would say, whoa, that is really really messed up. So they can't just do that. So they have to do it slow, 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 slow. All of the platforms are doing that. They're mm-hmm. it's like the frog in the pot of water, mm-hmm. and you know the old story. Yeah, the frog. Uh, you gradually, if you throw the frog into boiling water, he jumps right out. But you gradually increase the heat, the frog just stays in and gets boiled to death. And so this is what we're ha- what we're seeing here. People get banned from Twitter, blocked from Twitter. Uh, people get deep sixed at Google. You know, Jihad Watch used to be the first thing for years and years. Jihad Watch was the first thing you got when you searched the word jihad mm-hmm. because the it was a very simple thing. It was on the topic, and it was the most popular site on the topic. Mm -hmm. So that was it. But now it's buried uh, 20 pages back after 20 pages of dawah and information about Islam being a religion of peace. Because Omar Suleiman, an imam in Texas, convinced the people in Google that uh, their search results were Islamophobic. And they jumped into line. But people don't even realize. They still think that they Google things, and they get the information. And they don't realize what's happened because it didn't happen all at once. It's going on gradually. And every one of the platforms is doing that. Mm-hmm. And 
Uh, it, similar, similar things with me, um, that on YouTube four, four or five years ago, if you typed in Muhammad, Jihad, Quran, anything like that, and looked at the top 20 videos, I would have like three or four or five of the top 20 videos. Now you look up any of those terms, you'll have to go down like nine pages of videos to find anything by me. When you look at yeah. my videos, they have have far more views. They'll have millions of views. And you look at the ones on the front page and they'll have 20,000, 30,000, things like that. And YouTube has even said about this, they said, well, they're favoring, they're, they're, they're tweaking the algorithm to favor uh, what they call authoritative content. So they, uh -huh. yeah, they favor the, the the good guys in all this, not you guys who are just quoting Muhammad and so on. But uh, so, so <laughs> yeah. So notice that's uh, that's what's going on is going on everywhere. And, and, you know, the thing is, you look at how things are right now and you say, wow, this is this sucks. But then you look at the trend and say, where are we five years from now? Where are we eight years from now? Yeah. After after these guys continue slowly cooking us. Um, where they, they implement these changes, you know, these little tiny changes every couple months, which gets something else banned, something, you know, this or that, gets this person kicked off the platform. Well, that, that, that slow cooking there, what, you know, what are things like five or 10 years from now with that, with that progression? And uh, <laughs> I just, uh, I hope people, I hope people catch on because this is not going to, this is not going to be a pretty world. Yeah, we'll be cooked frogs. It'll all be over if uh, these trends continue and aren't challenged. One encouraging sign is that the president has spoken out about these things a couple times. A lot of people are very impatient and said he hasn't done enough, but I think, well, if anybody else were president, no, he wouldn't. the president would not have said anything at all, but mm -hmm. would be applauding this going on. And so at least we have a shot. Uh, possibly there will be some action that will be able to be taken. A lot of people talking about uh, stripping the rights as a platform from these social media giants, treating them as publishers, in which case they'd be liable, and then they could be sued. That might uh, that might do it. I, you know, I live in hope. Uh, I was born in South Carolina, and the state mm -hmm. motto is Doom Spiro Sparrow, while I breathe I hope. Mm -hmm. And so, there you go. Yeah, and there are, there are actually all kinds of things that the government could do, because this problem... This problem basically arises from some unclear wording in the Communications Decency Act, which allows these platforms to block certain content in good faith if, if, they, if, they, if they deem it yeah. harmful or dangerous, right? Well, it's not defined what harmful and dangerous content is and what it means to be acting in good faith. So these platforms have all used that law in a way that it was never intended. It was never intended to sort of have the best of both worlds, to have all the protections, to have all the protections of, uh, of a platform, but to have all the abilities of a publisher. You can just, you know, block whatever you want. Uh, guys, in case you don't know, we, we've talked about this on, on programs before, but the basic idea here is the, the current law if you're saying, hey, why don't you guys sue YouTube for messing with your content or for taking down stuff? Why don't you sue Twitter for blocking this post or that? Why don't you sue it? Well, the government has said you can't sue them over these things because they're platforms, not, not publishers. And um, in order to make sure that they can still block harmful content, the government basically said, well, as long as they're acting in good faith and, and against content that, that they regard as dangerous, well, notice all you have to do there is say, well, anything by whatever position you want, right? You can say anything by a conservative, we're going to say it's dangerous and we're going to block it all. Or if you're on the opposite side, any content by um, a liberal or something like that, we're, we're going we're gonna to block that. We regard it as, harmless, as, as harmful. Notice using the exact same methodology here. If you didn't want black people coming into your establishment, right? Coming into your restaurant. It's it's illegal to say you can't come in here because you're black. Well, what if you said, hey, you know, my public policy is I'm going to block, I'm allowed to, to kick people out if I regard them as dangerous and you actually put them in there. Well, what if you then said, I regard all black people as dangerous. And so I'm not blacking, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not kicking them out because they're black. I'm kicking them out because they're dangerous. Well, notice you could get, you could get the same results. That's what these companies are doing, right? That's exactly what these companies are doing. They're saying, yeah, we can't say we're blocking these people because we disagree with their views or their p political positions or their religious views or their moral views. They can't say that. 
Uh, so what they say is we're, we're blocking hate speech. Well, who decides what hate speech is? This leftist dude who grew up and, you know, went to his, uh, went to his safe space and learned that anything <laughs> that disagrees with him or hurts his feelings is hate speech. He gets to decide what hate speech is. The system is insane. The system is insane. It so is. What, this, could, this could all change just by the government actually stepping in here and say, we're going to make it very clear what kinds of content you guys can block. We're going to make it very clear um, uh, what the process is for going about this. And I would say they need some sort of better appeal system where it goes to someone outside of that platform if you if they're yeah. if they're clearly doing There's something. There's generally no appeal in any of these things. You know, Amazon years ago kicked me off the uh, Amazon Smile, which is their charity program. You can sign up a 501c3 charity to get a percentage of your uh, purchases. Mm -hmm. But Jihad Watch is a 501c3 charity, but it's not eligible because Amazon decided they were going to go by the Southern Poverty Law Center as to uh, what was eligible and what wasn't. And there's no appeal. There's no discussion allowed. It's the same thing with these uh, videos. You know, we, you and I made the video last year, was it, about Tommy Robinson? And it was removed by YouTube. Did you hear anything from them about it? I never heard anything from them about it. It was just removed unilaterally. Twitter bans people unilaterally all the time. There's no discussion, no dissent, no appeal, no recourse. It was when Patreon, GoFundMe, Indiegogo, all of those people, there was no, there was no way to have any discussion with anybody about it. They were completely authoritarian about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's that's I'm not on Facebook anymore and I'm not on Twitter anymore because of that. This was after the after the uh, Christchurch shooting in New Zealand. Um, I posted a video condemning the attack. So I, I called the people who I called people who think that they're going to settle this through violence and killing, you know, random Muslims and so on. Uh, I called them morons. Uh, I believe they are morons and so on. And Twitter said, uh, we're blocking you because you posted video footage of the attack. And I said, I said what? The video is me talking. Uh, I didn't post one second of the footage, nor have I ever watched one second of the footage. So I don't know how would I post it. And they said, after review, we've concluded that you did indeed post video footage of the attack. It's like, what are you talking about? And so you have to take this down. So to this day, I am not allowed on, I'm allowed to go on Twitter, um, but as soon as I go on, it says you have to delete this video. And it's just, no, you, you got, you're lying. <laughs> you're just, you're, mm -hmm. you're just lying. You're a but there's no, yeah. there's no discussion. Yeah. You are a person. You're a person. The, the, the person who blocked me, you are a person who doesn't like me. And you know that you can't block anything I just said as, as actual hate speech because there's nothing in there. I'm condemning an attack. But you're looking for an opportunity to just block me, to just block my content. And you're saying, this contains... This contains video footage of the terrorist attack. No, it doesn't. Not one second. But you can say that. So, and, that and that's the that's the problem that 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 came out in uh, uh, Facebook. I don't know if you saw that. You catch it on Facebook a while back when they they had the undercover Project Veritas. Did yeah. You catch that? Yeah. Same. Well, I saw that they uh, they they got Facebook officials to say that they were doing this kind of thing. Is that what you're referring to? Uh, yeah, no, they they had the base, basically people on the Facebook trust and safety team. They've mm. got people in there with hidden cameras on them. And these people, I'll block anybody. If I see oh, someone yeah. in a MAGA hat, I'm blocking him. And they're just saying things like that. And it's like, these are the arbiters of public discourse, right? It's Yeah, and they've got Tabako Karman on their board. Their their censorship board. I don't I don't remember what they call it. Maybe it's their trust and safety board. I don't remember. But Facebook has, she's a Muslim Brotherhood operative. This is not a secret or a conspiracy theory. This is a Muslim Brotherhood activist who they have judging whether people can be blocked or not or should be blocked or not on Facebook. So it's no surprise that uh, content that is a regard about jihad and speaks honestly about it gets buried. Yep. And so, guys, it, it's, it, it, here's, here's what I find truly amazing, Robert. Yes, sir. This is what I find most amazing of all. Almost everything is pretty one-sided, right? Hollywood basically has one position. Uh, the media basically has one position. The education system basically has one position. All of these platforms have one position. They're all they're all they're all pushing in the exact same direction. 
the fact that people still listen to us and catch on, that's got to say something about the ideas involved. Oh, yeah. There's no doubt about that. Because they the, the one drawback that they have is when they win, they lose. They control everything, as you have noted. They've got the educational system, the entertainment industry, the establishment media. It's all theirs. And yet what they say is so transparently false and unconvincing that people still seek out the alternatives and look for the truth elsewhere. And that's why this video is going to get so many views, because people know they can get it here. Yeah, and uh, that is, uh, that's the thing that's still good in spite of the opposition. In spite of all of the opposition, we are still able to speak uh, on our websites, even though there is sabotage, even though they sabotage Robert Spencer in, uh, in, in, the, uh, in the Google searches, even though YouTube sabotages my stuff, uh, people are still catching on, right? And, 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 that, and that's, what's, that's what's amazing is it, it's a couple of things. One, in searches, I pointed out in searches, I used to have a ton of videos on the, uh, at the tops, at the tops of these, you know, various terms that you would search. Um, I used to be, I used to be, if you search Takia, if you said, what is Takia or something like that in a Google search, my video would pop up at the top. My, my video would pop up at the top. No more, no more of that. Right. So it's basically you have things that people are searching for, but also my biggest source of videos used to be suggested videos. Meaning when you're watching one video, YouTube yeah. suggests other stuff you might watch. Now, both searches and uh, suggested videos are a tiny, tiny fraction of the views I actually get. The yeah. most, most of the views that I get are from subscribers who are, who are watching my content. So because YouTube isn't, um, isn't sending it out anymore. So, but here, here's what's amazing. I'm, I'm getting more views than I than I've ever gotten in the past, in spite mm -hmm. of them sabotaging. In spite of them sabotaging. That's us. great. So, can just you could just imagine, in a world where they weren't sabotaging us and weren't blocking our stuff and weren't, you know, sandbagging your articles so that they appear much much lower and actually let people decide what they want to read and what they want to watch. Be a landslide. Oh, no doubt about that. Yeah, but you know they do it to everybody. Uh, it's an interesting thing. Just earlier today, Trump spoke at uh, a rally in Pennsylvania in uh, some place that is connected to Biden. And I thought, well, that might be interesting. And I went to YouTube to find it. And I searched for Trump Live because it was going on at the time. And it didn't come up. I searched for Trump Rally. I searched for Trump in Pennsylvania. And I searched for, I think, a couple other things. It did not come up. Hmm. And I think this is a, a major news event. This is the president of the United States, and he's speaking in the home territory of his opponent in the November election, and YouTube doesn't want people to see it. Hmm. And so they made it impossible to find. Finally, I found it. I went to uh, Right Side Broadcasting Network that uh, covers these things fairly faithfully. And sure enough, they had it live, but it did not come up in any of the YouTube searches for exactly the thing I was looking for. Mm -hmm. Yep. So we got some issues. We got some no issues doubt about here. it. Um, fortunately, th th this kind of ties into what we were, what we were talking about yesterday when we were talking about Muhammad Hijab that he thinks, you know, <laughs> let me harass these guys. Let me intimidate these guys and they'll back down. The, the plus side of all of this, the plus side of all of this is that the, the, the people who are still speaking the truth in spite of the, all the pressures are pretty fearless and relentless people that you couldn't stop if you saw their heads off. You know what I mean? And so oh, yeah. even if we have a small group, if we have a small group of completely fearless, relentless freedom fighters here. And they're massively outnumbered. They're massively outnumbered, but they're massively outnumbered by cowards <laughs> who, who's, who's, who, oh, yeah. know, who know that their ideas cannot stand up to scrutiny. Well, I like these odds. I'm, I'm okay <laughs> with these odds. I'll, I'll, st Absolutely. I'll, I'll, I'll stick with my side. All right, ladies and gentlemen, um, I will be back 
I will be back, Lord willing, tomorrow night with Sam Shamoon, where we will be responding to our dear friend, the great ape of Islamic apologetics, Muhammad Hijab. Uh, that... Hey, can I be the referee when you guys fight? <laughs> I'll get one of those striped shirts. That would that would be cool. We'll we'll see we'll 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 see uh, we'll see what plans we uh, what plans we come up with. Um, so, anyway, <laughs> see everyone tomorrow night, and I included some links in the description box. So there's a link to Robert Spencer's YouTube channel, um, especially his uh, his website Jihad Watch, and there's a link to his book. He has a ton of books, but the one you definitely want to get if you want to understand the topics that I usually deal with, you definitely want to get the history of jihad, the history of jihad. And so you might look at that and say, oh, you know, that's a big book. I'm not going to read all of that. Even if you get the book and just read the first chapter and learn the material in the first chapter. So don't think, ah, book's kind of big for me to read. If you get through, if you if you go all the way through the book, it, it's it's exactly what it says. It's a history of jihad, right? Starts off at Muhammad, goes all the way down to the present, covering um, all these issues, and it really does not sink in until you understand that this has been completely relentless for 14 centuries. Jihad has been coming after you relentlessly, mercilessly. For 14 centuries, it has never stopped. The only time it looks like it stopped is when it gets stopped, but then it's just more planning for for the next jihad. So, uh, again, read that if you if you if you are willing to read a big book, that is a very good big book to read. Even if you're looking at that, and you're saying, ah, "I prefer videos. I don't like to read much." Get the material in the first chapter down. So, again, uh, those links are in the description box. Robert, final thoughts on. Everything we discussed here. Well, it's interesting that you know that the jihad has been relentless for 1,400 years. It certainly has. That was the overwhelming impression I got when I was writing the book, that there was never any respite. There was never any peace. There was never any period of calm. They just kept coming whenever they were able to and had the resources. Mm -hmm. And that is the point I was making earlier about care. They lost this one against the Scottsdale Community College, but that does not mean in the slightest degree they won't try this again. And they will keep on doing it until they are either stopped or they destroy the freedom of speech and impose the Sharia blasphemy laws in the United States. And why do they want to do that? Well, if uh, if they get their way, if they get their way, groups like CARE get their way, then they control the flow of information. People only hear what they want them to hear about Islam and then they have a free hand. They yeah. can do whatever they want. And then they can tell everyone that the greatest man in history, the most peaceful and wonderful feminist of all time, <laughs> who brought nothing but peace and interfaith harmony, so clearly a prophet because he's the greatest man who ever lived and did the greatest things. And his book is filled with all these amazing scientific insights. His perfectly preserved book. <laughs> these... These guys want to teach your kids about Islam, and they do not want anyone else pointing out basic facts. And so they want to control the information in terms of future prospects for conversion, but they also want to control the information because that guy in that class, that Muslim in that class, they don't want him hearing any of this. They don't want him hearing any yeah. of this. They don't want people to be allowed to tell that to tell him about Islam. And so you Muslims who are watching, thank you for watching because this is where you're going to get some facts about Islam. You're not getting it from your apologists. You're definitely not getting it. All right. Catch everyone. Catch everyone. Tomorrow should have a video. I just po I just posted a video before we started. Should have another video out in the morning and then live again tomorrow night. Again, check out the links to Robert's sites.